panel. Uh, we will try to discuss the role um, of the European left. Um, um, uh, many of the issues uh, we wanted to raise have already been uh, raised yesterday. So um, instead of uh, reading the original set of questions, I thought that maybe we can uh, shift the perspective uh, a bit just to maybe um, to add maybe uh, um, a new aspect to the whole uh, problem. So I'll give a very, uh, I'll try to give a short um, introduction and then, um, then we'll proceed with the panelists. So, um, we are all, of course, debating the crisis and um, um, the position of the left in it. Um, so what seems uh, very clear uh, is um, what the perspective, uh, what the crisis means from the perspective of capital. So um, we have seen the, the crisis developing from a financial crisis to a sovereign debt crisis. And now through um, this uh, push for uh, generalized austerity politics, uh, it seems that capital has um, decided to, uh, to turn the, the crisis into a general cri a crisis of uh, general crisis of social reproduction, especially for the working classes. So, um, faced with the dilemma of either accepting um, the, the destruction of fictitious capital on a vast scale or uh, shifting the burden onto the working classes, capital has decided, uh, obviously, to do uh, the latter. Um, so this is the perspective of capital, and but the question is now uh, um, how how are things seen uh, from the left, from from the left in in a, in a situation where basically um, the constellation of forces is such that uh, capital um, and capitalism is still on the offensive, and um, as we all know. Um, the front line now, um, as we all know that historically capitalism shows its most vicious face in the periphery and the European crisis is no exception to that. So within the European uh, Union, the monetary union, the periphery now where the things are really played out is of course Greece. And since it has, been, it has already been said that we are all Greeks now uh, or are about to become Greeks, um, I want, so I will, um, I'll ask first um, Haris uh, Golemis, who is um, director of the Nikos Poulantas Institute uh, from Greece, uh, to comment um, on his, his view on the situation in Greece and, and the perspectives for the left. In fact, I think uh, we shouldn't uh, exaggerate speaking only about the situation in Greece. We should try to use the situation in Greece to generalize about the strategy of the left in Europe. Uh, I don't believe that uh, taking a case study is, is uh, the, the most right uh, the way to proceed uh, for trying to find common places in our strategies. I'm also very happy uh, from your introduction because uh, it's, uh, it's a turn from the first uh, draft where the, the uh, whole idea was that could create a, a confusion that it was the EU who is uh, the real problem uh, in the present situation, while it is capitalist crisis, which of course is uh, more severe to the European Union because of its architecture, because of, of uh, the rivalries that exist between the constituent countries the, in this uh, uh, imperialist chain that exists within it and so and so. So I, I, I think that uh, uh, the, the, the crisis in Europe um, creates uh, um, two possible uh, re uh, responses for the peoples of Europe. Um, despite the various differences among the countries. First is uh, uh, passivity fatalism in a way, nothing can be done, and compliance with the policies and with the hegemony, the ruling hegemony of the belief that there is no alter alternative. Something that we thought it was dead, but it is not dead, unfortunately. And uh, I would call this an, an Eastern European approach, and I don't want to offend anybody. I mean, but, but I, I, I have in mind a behavior uh, typical for many years 
until uh, recently, fortunately things have changed recently, to most countries of the former so-called existing socialist bloc after 1989, where they accepted everything. So this is the one danger. But this is the danger. The opportunity is that uh, there is uh, the possibility of the development of a new radicalism. And uh, it's here that the left should intervene. So in that sense, we have uh, as uh, uh, a radical left uh, in Europe, with all our differences among ourselves, um, two enemies. One is the neoliberal Europeanist forces of the center right and the certain left. Um, when, when I say center left, I mean the, the social democrats, uh, which are, I mean, don't have the right to, to, to bear this name anymore, uh, this historical tendency. And the other, the anti European, nationalist, xenophobic, racist forces of the extreme right. And we are obliged to give a battle in both fronts. So what is to be done? I don't think that uh, it is easy to give a blueprint for the role of uh, the European radical left in general towards uh, the, the, the EU project uh, during the crisis since there are many differences among the EU countries and the strategies of the left cannot be decided independently of these differences. And I mentioned some of these differences. The economic situation of, of uh, various countries in North, South and Central Europe. The position of the country in the imperialist chain, big and small countries in the center or in the periphery. The political tradition consensual versus confrontational politics. History, including civil wars, dictatorships, wars, which are in the collective memory. Culture, state of class struggle, uh, social partnership in trade unionism versus confrontational trade unionism. Um, and various other uh, uh, variants uh, of, of the situations that we know uh, that exist in, in all this country. So that's why I said at the beginning that something that accidentally, no, not accidentally, unexpectedly uh, happened in Greece, uh, in a country where the political system collapsed and gave uh, to the radical left a, a huge uh, boost could not be a, a blueprint for, for, for every country. But uh, the fact is that uh, the way the European Union tries uh, through its policies to homogenize what is happening throughout Europe, using, using also, uh, also the, the recent uh, uh, financial pact, how, how is it called? Fiscal, Fiscal pact. Uh, is in some sense gives us the possibility of speaking in more general terms. Uh, and uh, this is very important. At the same time, at the same time through an inverse uh, way, uh, okay, homogenizes uh, as uh, people of the left, either of the political left or of the social left of the movements, etc. So I have one minute. For in my first round, and uh, I will say just two of the points which I think that the left uh, uh, should uh, uh, follow, two ideas on that, and then come to the rest if I have the time. First, uh, we should not underestimate, the, although we are internationalists, or I am internationalist, we don't we shouldn't underestimate the importance of the national and local level. Res we should resist, disobey, and make programmatic proposals at a national basis, where, since it is there where the class struggle takes place, 
it independently of whether the decisions of the ruling classes are taken at levels outside the countries, but not necessarily against, as some people believe, the national political forces and fractions of capital. We should show solidarity for those suffering, try to experiment uh, examples of, of solidary economy in various ways, and uh, have the slogan, nobody can be alone in the crisis. And the second thing out of, it, out of 10 points that I have made is that uh, uh, I, I subscribe absolutely with what Samir Amin said yesterday, that uh, we need audacity. Audacity. We must take risks. We must uh, uh, be, be ready to disobey orders from the, uh, from the European Union, but at the same time design a general or have or try to find a general political project for the foundation of, of Europe, giving answers to the problems of the conjuncture. Because, as I said before, anti-Europeanism is a preferential field of the extreme right. Return to the safety of the nation, the church and the family, hostility against the foreign is in general, and uh, the hatred, fear, aggression, and violence against immigrants. I stopped here, and then if I must, I will tell you why I think that the policy of Syriza not to promote uh, a slogan to get out of the Eurozone is a right a policy which helps the general cause of the European left. Thank you, Harris. So, um, since um, we have established that we have on the left at least two enemies, that is two main enemies, and that the task would be um, to basically to, to build a, a perspective for working class solidarity which would transcend national borders. Um, the immediate question, of course, that, um, to ask is, uh, given the conditions that, that one aspect of, of the class struggle led by capital is to push the working classes of, of the different nation states within the European Union into an intensified competitive battle. Um, this, of course, opens space for the, for the right-wing nationalists to, um, uh, to feed on, so to, uh, to base their narratives on this. And if we have seen anything um, in, the, in these past two or three uh, years, it is a resurgence of this right -wing, uh, these right-wing populist narratives. Even in the mainstream, for example, in Germany, the comments on, 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 on the Greece, the lazy Greeks, as we have already heard yesterday. So I want now to, um, to ask um, Karl-Heinz Delvo, who will be uh, replying in German, and I will then translate into English, um, uh, who, um, who is, um, a, as most of you will know, uh, um, a former member of the uh, RAF. He is uh, today a doc documentary filmmaker an author and uh, many other things. So I would like to ask um, Karl-Heinz uh, on, on the situation uh, as he sees it uh, in Germany, since Thomas Seibert has already um, given us uh, yesterday um, uh, an introduction into to the situation. Uh, Karl-Heinz wanted uh, um, to add uh, some different aspects, so please. Yes, excuse me, but I speak uh, bad English, and so I need a translation. Um, I will have. Ich möchte eine. Ich ich muss auch einen kleinen Rückblick machen. Ella und ich äh, gehören, äh, wie äh, Steve schon angekündigt hat, der ehemaligen bewaffneten Linken in der Bundesrepublik Deutschland ähm, an. Wir hatten. Please. I have to uh, sentence by sentence, otherwise it's, uh, it gets lost. So, um, Karl-Heinz says that he, uh, both he and Ella will be uh, speaking after him. I'll introduce her then uh, later. They have been uh, part of the, um, of the um, uh, armed struggles uh, of the 70s. Und äh, ich möchte jetzt nicht über äh, das Konzept des bewaffneten Kampfes reden. Ich möchte auch nichts aus der Vergangenheit beschönigen. Vieles ist äh, verloren äh, gegangen. Aber ich möchte 
an etwas äh, erinnern und das ist äh, gewesen, dass die Zeit, in der wir äh, politisch aktiv waren äh, oder, oder uns sozusagen ge gegründet haben, eine Zeit war, in der es einen, wie ich fand, sehr präzisen und sehr umfangreichen Blick auf die Verhältnisse gab und es äh, eine, eine, eine grundsätzliche große Kritik am Kapitalismus gab. So, um, but I don't want to talk about this, about the concept of, of armed struggle, and I don't want to uh, be apologetic about uh, our past, but what I want to, to say is that uh, compared, if we compare the situation uh, which, uh, from, uh, which formed uh, our, our struggles um, and compare it to today, that uh, um, back then there was a very clear conceptual awareness uh, about uh, uh, capitalism uh, uh, as As, as the, as the problem. Theoretisch haben aus der 68er Bewegung, nicht nur in Deutschland, in der ganzen Welt, eigentlich alle gewusst, dass der Kapitalismus zu Ende geht. Um, back then, uh, everything that evolved from the um, 68 movements, uh, all um, the entire left, uh, back then had an, uh, a strong awareness that, that uh, capital is, is about to end. Wenn ich mir äh, dann die Situation heute anschaue, dann äh, stelle ich fest, dass wir viel von dem Wissen verloren haben. Ich möchte auch einfach feststellen, es gibt sowohl innerhalb der Linken, auch innerhalb der Gesellschaften eine große Entpolitisierung über das, was Sozialismus, was Kommunismus, was eine andere Gesellschaft sein könnte. And uh, I have to say that um, uh, today um, much of that knowledge, of that awareness uh, um, has been lost. Even on the left we witness uh, a tendency towards depolitization, a, a loss uh, about, of knowledge about what socialism uh, uh, meant, what, what communism meant. Was supposed to mean. Das hat natürlich auch damit zu tun, dass wir unseren Kampf aus den 70er Jahren verloren haben. This of course has uh, also something to do with the fact that uh, uh, we have, uh, we who participated in the, in the struggles of the 70s have lost our battles. Das hat aber auch damit zu tun, dass aus dieser Niederlage heraus äh, es sehr viele integrative Strateg politische Strategien gab, die sozusagen versucht haben, aus dem Inneren heraus noch etwas Grundsätzliches zu bewegen oder auf der Basis des Systems äh, etwas Grundsätzliches zu bewegen. Another aspect is of course that um, uh, one, uh, one consequence or one tendency uh, uh, was to, to try to change things uh, from within the system. Gestern hat äh, äh, Saskia Sassen äh, richtig gesagt, wie ich finde, sehr unterstützenswert, dass man immer einen Blick vom Rande des Systems nehmen muss, dass man aus dem Inneren heraus keinen Überblick entwickelt, sondern vom, vom Rand, mindestens vom Rande aus. And as uh, Saskia Sassen uh, has said yesterday, and uh, which I uh, fully um, uh, agree with, is that uh, one always has to look at the system uh, from, uh, from the outside, or at least from the margins, from the inside, there is, uh, uh, you, you have no systemic overview. Ein Teil systemic overview. Ein Teil der 68er Bewegung und damals der, der größte Teil war, hatte die richtige Erkenntnis, dass wir uns, soweit es geht, außerhalb des Systems stellen müssen und dass Identität etwas ist, was sich entwickelt und das ist ja notwendig, weil sie fällt ja nicht vom Himmel, wo kommt sozusagen eine, 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 eine kollektive Identität der, der Linken her, dass die sich letztlich nur entwickelt, wenn man auch das System als Ganzes in Frage stellt. And uh, I believe that um, uh, the majority of, of uh, the people uh, coming from the 68 movement uh, um, uh, acknowledged that. They knew that uh, the only uh, position is to, uh, the only option is to posi position uh, oneself outside the system because this is the only uh, way that you can truly develop uh, an identity. Uh, ident identity which does not fall from the sky but which is uh, a question uh, which is a process which largely depends on where you position yourself. Das ist auch meine persönliche Erfahrung. Ich war über 21 Jahre im Gefängnis, Ella war 15 Jahre im äh, Gefängnis und äh, also ich glaube, wir hätten das nicht überstanden und hätten uns nicht dort weiterentwickelt, wenn wir uns nicht auch in Konfrontation mit diesem ganzen damals auch dem Gefängnissystem, aber darüber hinaus auch mit dem gesamten gesellschaftlichen System des Kapitalismus ge gesetzt hätten. And this is also uh, my, my own personal experience. Uh, I've spent uh, uh, 
um, 20, 21 years in, in prison and uh, um, Gabriele has spent 15 years in prison and in that situation uh, um, you, uh, uh, if you if you do not um, if you do not uh, have an awareness that you have to confront uh, the, the system as a whole to position yourself against it uh, it is very hard to endure uh, this is um, a necessity for 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 one's um, Uh, in, 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 yeah. so for, for the survival, yes, of ones, of, of ja. Ich möchte, wie gesagt, nichts wiederholen. Was in der Vergangenheit gescheitert ist, das muss man auch in der Vergangenheit lassen. Man kann seine Resultate daraus ziehen, das ist mir ganz wichtig. Aber was ich, äh, wo, gerne, wo ich hin doch gerne zurückkommen möchte, ist, dass wir im Alltag und überall, bei allem, was wir machen, zu einer Infragestellung, dass, dass wir sagen, dass das kapitalistische System ist zu Ende, es muss umgewälzt werden. Und das ist etwas, was mir in, in zum Beispiel in der institutionellen Politik, ein, eine Kritik, an der, würde ich zum Beispiel sagen, an der deutschen Linken, die in Europa kann ich jetzt nicht einschätzen, die ich nennen würde, weil das ist etwas, was fehlt. Sowas. Und ich meine, man muss der Bevölkerung, man muss ihr das auch sagen, es, gibt, es wird keinen positiven Weg in die Zukunft geben. And so, and this is something I believe that has to be confirmed uh, uh, every day in, in, in one's life practice. And this would be also my criticism about, uh, about uh, um, uh, large as aspects of the German left today, which seem to, to, to um, these strategies uh, to work from within the system often lose, uh, lose uh, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the cl clarity of, of, of one's positioning against the system. One has to show and to tell people, people that capitalism has no future, that they cannot expect anything uh, from capitalism. Wir hatten gestern, äh, das, war, das war vielleicht etwas als Scherz gemeint, am äh, Mittagstisch ein kleines Gespräch gehabt und da ging es einfach um die Frage, was kommt zuerst, was zerstört die Gesellschaft zuerst? Ist das der tendenzielle Fall der Profitrate, wie Marx ihn vorausgesehen hat, oder ist es die Klimakatastrophe? Nicht? Darüber kann man jetzt überlegen, was, 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 was kommt. Aber das, was kommt, ist auf jeden Fall eine große Zerstörung und die ist nicht zu reparieren durch irgendwelche ein, kleinen einzelnen Maßnahmen, sondern wir müssen tatsächlich tatsächlich zu der Erkenntnis kommen, dass wir sagen, der Kapitalismus ist historisch auch an einem, für uns als an einem Ende angelangt. We were yesterday or lunch we were joking uh, about um, what would what would uh, eventually de de destroy society, or whether it would be uh, Marx's uh, tendential uh, rate, uh, tendential um, law of the profit rate to fall, or whether it would be uh, ecological uh, uh, ecological cataclysm. Cata 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 But uh, um, this is basically the only question uh, uh, left. Uh, it is certain that one form of, of destruction will occur. It is only a question which form it will take. And This is something we have to, to uh, face and acknowledge. Ja, und damit würde ich es hier auch gleich mit einer Sache noch beenden. Wir brauchen, wir müssen uns einen, einen eigenen Raum erkämpfen. Wir haben, wir haben keinen Raum. So, das gibt jetzt bestimmte Ansätze, gibt es sowas wie in, das, was in Frankfurt, was die Occupy-Bewegung ist. Es gibt ja viele Sachen, die positiv waren. Es gab die Bewegung gegen Globalisierung oder die gibt es immer noch. Es gibt die Occupy-Bewegung. Das sind Sachen, die auf der Straße stattfinden und sie haben auch von vornherein eine, 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 eine klare Konfrontation. Sie sind nicht nur am Protest sondern sie versuchen auch etwas zu, zu konfrontieren und das, glaube ich, bewegt sehr viel. Und wir müssen, wir müssen uns einen gesellschaftlichen Raum holen und der wird uns nicht vom System gegeben, sondern den müssen wir uns irgendwie auf der Straße oder wo auch immer in unseren Aktionen selber schaffen. And um, the left has, has to, um, has to um, create a social space for itself, which uh, has to be... Uh, uh which uh, cannot uh, which is not going to be given uh, uh, to the left of, uh, from uh, from the elites it is something that uh, the left has to struggle for it is uh, and uh, we see uh, uh, this in part already occurring the occupy movement uh, the, uh, the thing uh, which uh, is now planned uh, for frankfurt the alt uh, and uh, alter globalization movement and uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, an uh, a vital necessity for the left to struggle uh, for, for uh, uh, to create space uh, social space within which it, it, it can uh, from which it can then confront the system the system as a whole
Und vielleicht noch, noch eine Bemerkung. Und unser Feind ist nicht nur das Finanzkapital oder der, der Kapitalismus als solches, sondern wir sind auch konfrontiert mit einem jahrhundertelang inzwischen gewachsenen Bewusstsein in der Mehrheitsbevölkerung. Es gibt ja nicht nur eine Herrschaft von oben, also es gibt auch eine Übereinstimmung zwischen, zwischen denen unten und denen äh, oben. Es gibt eine Verinnerlichung dessen, was kapitalistische Rationalität ist. Und die werden wir nicht aufbrechen durch irgendwelche Deklamationen oder sowas, sondern die werden wir nur über konkrete Aktionen in Frage stellen können. And uh, 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 one uh, additional important aspect: uh, the enemy is not only financial uh, uh, capital. Uh, it is also um, uh, a, a common sense which has been nurtured now already over centuries, which is um, um, a consensus which has been built up not only uh, through um, dictates from above, but it, which is the, the result of, of, a, of, a, of a deep um, uh, penetration of, of internalized capitalist rationality even within the people uh, themselves. And this is something we also have to, to fight for, but not uh, through, uh, through um, uh, empty declarations. This is something which has, which has to, be, uh, um, to be challenged in, in active struggle. Thank you. Okay, okay. this was Thank you. Thank you. Karl Heinz. I hope the translation worked. And now, um, uh, Gabriele uh, Rolnik. She's an, an author, and as, as Karl Heinz has already said, uh, he, she, she was um, also part of the, of the uh, militant struggles of the 70s, part of the um, Zweite Juni group. And so um, now, uh, Gabriele. Yeah, it's, it's a pity that we didn't learn English very well in prison, but only make hunger strikes to change our conditions. That was a fault. Um, well, uh, revel the, the, left, the role of the left in Europe, uh, what is the role of the left in Europe, uh, of the European left? Uh, I don't see a European left, but on this uh, table there are people who say we are the European left. They work together in Europe and they work, uh, they, uh, work on the in the parliament. And I think that is, um, that is an approach uh, which is not mine, but which is a good approach. Um, I don't see a, a, a real European left. Uh, for, for me, left means that uh, you must have, uh, you, you should work out a, a revolutionary theory and a revolutionary strategy to overcome capitalism and um, at a whole. And uh, there, are, um, I think we are uh, just at the beginning. Uh, perhaps there are some efforts in this uh, in this uh, line, in, in this to, to this aim, but uh, there is a lot to do, and I do not have uh, answers. Mm, I have, um, I, I, I have to uh, think about uh, it. Uh, what what can uh, overcome uh, cap uh, the capitalism? And I think it's the capitalism. Uh, the comrade uh, Aris said uh, is a offense in, at the offense. Uh, that's right, but it's also a declining capitalism. I don't think that it has answers for, for the, um, the things which are uh, necessary for the human being. And um, nevertheless, it's, uh, it's uh, very dangerous and um, brutal and destructive. Um, yes, but uh, what do we do? Or what, what shall we do? And I think uh, we have to look at all and... Um, I think all uh, left efforts are um, honorable, but um, you, uh, I, I think uh, the left has uh, to held in mind that uh, it goes against the, uh, the whole system or it shall be uh, only uh, inside and uh, shall be integrated if it doesn't see this. That's it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Very brief. Yeah. And so, so you can speak more. Yes. Oh, so parliament. You always speak more. <laughs> I'm not parliament. No. I'm. Shall I introduce you or? Yes, please. Okay. Waltraud. <laughs> Waltraud uh, Fritz Klackel. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, and she's a, a member of the European Left. And. Board. Of the executive board of the European Left Party, and uh, is Kapoor is that still 
Okay, and the Co Communist Party of Austria. So, um, Walter, please. Thank you, comrades. Um, Gabriele, I listen carefully to you. And of course, we need to be shorter because the male comrades always use up their time and more. Um, and I agree with you. When I'm talking now <clears throat> from the point of view of the Euro European left, I'm talking about the European left party. And this is only a small part of the European left, of course. The European left, we all learned, and we are, I think, all happy about that, is much more. It's the movements, it's the trade unions, or at least part of it, thank God. It's a lot of different parties or social uh, context. And all of us, I think, are getting more and more aware of the fact that we need at least come together to discuss, to confront each other with our different views and and this I'm really more happy about even is that we come to the conclusion that we need to do something together more than we did in the past with more passion, with more patience and with the conviction that uh, this is our reason for being. Okay, this is what I wanted to say about the European Left Party and how it considers itself only as a contribution to this process that is on its way. Um, Karl-Heinz, I think when you talked about uh, the whole system is coming to an end, we have to confront the whole system, I think there is no debate about that. N nobody would uh, dis even say no to that, but the question is how does this system come to an end? Does it end in a catastrophe, or, or are we able to turn it into something different, into something which makes life worth living and makes the fight worth fighting? And this, I think, we need to uh, keep in the, in the discussion. Uh, that the system completely failed, we see now in Europe. The European project is more in danger than ever. Despite what's happening in France, in Greece, or in Spain, you know, the, the united left of Spain just joined the government in Andal Andalusia to make changes possible there. But this does not make things easier, but even more complicated, because that means the forces of progress, of social progress, of, of, of um, the left in the widest sense are getting more influence. This does not make the enemy, as you call them, uh, more content or let's say, oh yes, that's fine, we are going home and try to think again. No, it means we are more than ever confronted with difficulties we have to overcome. And we have to overcome the difficulties together and very, very concrete at that stage. We have concrete um, projects we need to approach now. We need to approach the question how to defend the, the Greek people. How do we help them to defend their right to stay within Europe, to defend, defend their right to say no to the financial obligations to the fiscal pact, we, do, we need to confront ourselves this, with the question how we can make use and of the French victory of the moderate left forces, but of the radical uh, progress as well. We need to come together to discuss these points because the concrete successes or defeats are making the big trans progresses, the big victories or defeats in the long run. And as a representative of the European left, I'm not the only one, Christoph is my partner in crime, so to say, in the export, um, we are still believing in the necessity of parties. And we are the only European left party. We are not the only European party, but the only European left party. And what we can offer is a space, a space for discussion, but in a space for discussing strategies, a space for discussing the next steps, the next steps towards an aim, 
The aim is to transform the society. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Waltraud. So now um, we come to Christoph Ventura, who is a member of, uh, I'll probably pronounce it wrong, but Memoir de Lud, okay, de Lud, and uh, the Front, Front de Gauche. So, and, uh, so he um, is in, the, in a privileged position to provide, obviously, some insider, uh, uh, some inside perspective on the situation uh, in France and also, um, um, of course, the success of um, Mélenchon, which wasn't as great as many uh, have, seem to have expected, but which is a significant success uh, nevertheless. So please, Christoph. Thank you. Uh, oops, hello. Oops, yes. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank... Uh, it doesn't work. Take this one. Ah. It's better. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, th uh, first of all, I'd like to thank, uh, to really thank uh, the organizers for the, this invitation and uh, especially what for Igor uh, Stretchko and Andrea who, who made a great job for, for this initiative. So uh, in the name of Mémoire des Luttes with Bernard, we are very happy to be partners to, uh, to, to this event. Uh, who I hope will be uh, uh, useful for the, the, the building of a network at the international level in the future for the Balkans uh, countries. That was my first words. Um, I'd, I'd like to, to try to uh, articulate uh, the presentation of uh, what's happening in France uh, with Le Front de Gauche and with Jean-Luc Mélenchon to the European global context, because I think that uh, what's happening in France, uh, in some respects, in our specific conditions of our country, uh, takes part of a global uh, uh, situation with several tendencies, and I'd like to, to, to introduce a bit uh, those tendencies. Uh, today, it is clear that we can see, uh, if you look at the European map, the European political map, you can see uh, several uh, tendencies. At least we see two of them. The first uh, is, is uh, that there is a clear sanction in the different votes in all the countries. There are, different, there are uh, sanctions for the austerity policies everywhere. I would say, in France, we have a world we are talking about an uh, austeritarian system. It means, on the one hand, austerity for uh, economical uh, policies and uh, authoritarian for democracy and for uh, uh, democracy policies of the, of, uh, the EU. So we, we are talking about uh, an austeritarian system. So that's the world I will, uh, I will use to combine the economical dimension and uh, the political one. So there is a clear sanction of, uh, of this uh, austeritarian system everywhere. And uh, we can see in all the countries, in different uh, ways, the fact that there is a, a, a low but uh, uh, clear erosion of uh, the two-party system uh, and uh, the rise of anti-system uh, political forces. Uh, it's true in all countries, we have seen that in Greece, we, in France, but also in the UK, if you look at the last election in the UK and beginning of May, etc., etc., or Spain, etc., etc. And those forces, those political forces, can be from the left, as we are, or not. That's the situation where, where, where we are. Uh, we have seen in Greece, for example, with Syriza, or in France with Le Front de Gauche, uh, the rise of a radical left of government, a radical left who is, in the same time, radical in, a, in his perspectives, in the way that she, she wants a rupture with the austeritarian system from uh, all uh, the economical policies, but also at the democratic level and uh, for the, the, the European project, and ready and, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to assume uh, a position of, uh, of power in the state. That's uh, what we are. Uh, but in Europe, it is not only this left that uh, today is, uh, is exp expressing itself uh, in, the, in the situation. We can see some forces who are, uh, let's say, anti-political. We can see in Italy, for example, movements like uh, the, the Cinque Stelle, the Five uh, Stars movement, who is rising much more than the left, the radical left. Uh, and I don't have uh, all the knowledge and the time to, to discuss this kind of of movement, sorry, but I think it would be uh, useful to analyze a, a bit uh, that kind of uh, uh, expression. Or you can see in Germany, for example, uh, the, the, the Piraten, their Piraten party, uh, during the last vote, for example. The next liberal party. Alors, but what, what, yes, but 
Probably, I'm absolutely sure about that, but what, what is uh, interesting is to see that those political forms are uh, uh, emerging in this situation where people are rejecting uh, the two system, uh, classical conservative social democrats uh, system. And that's uh, what I, I want to say. So Cinque Stelle in Italy, uh, the Der Piraten in Germany, and, at, and also at the end, much more problematic, the rise of uh, far-right parties or extreme-right parties in most country, European countries everywhere, from Belgium, Norway, France, Italy, Latvia, Hungary, etc., etc., including the fact that a lot of them are now in, in, the, in various parliaments at the national level. So that's, uh, I think, the, the global map uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, see today. And in this context, uh, the left, the radical left, uh, really to, go, to, to, to be in the government, is also rebuilding itself. Uh, and, and it's trying to find a new way, a new perspective uh, for, for, to find and to build a progressive perspective to the crisis of the EU and of the capitalism system. That's where we are. There is a clear battle now between uh, in the context of this erosion of the two system parties between a new radical left who's trying to rebuild itself and a reactionary answer to, uh, to, uh, to the crisis, uh, 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 which is uh, the one from the far right and extreme right uh, parties, xenoph xenophobic, uh, anti-migrants, etc., etc. What Bebel called at the time the socialist uh, of the fool. Uh, the fact that uh, I want to save my job against uh, you because you are in concurrence with me. That's basically where we are. One minute. <laughs> okay, so it will be very short. That was the global uh, introduction. Uh, and in this context, so uh, in France, something is happening. So that's called the Front de Gauche. And uh, the Front de Gauche is a very new political uh, subject because it was born in 2009. So uh, uh, three years ago, and uh, now for, uh, we have arrived to a certain point where uh, we can uh, assume the idea that uh, we have a, sta a stable tool to build this new left in the country. Uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who was a candidate uh, who has run for, for the election, made more than 10% of the vote in the first turn. It means four millions of people. Uh, pe the voters in France are 41 million people. So it makes 11.5%. Uh, 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 but more than that, uh, the Front de Gauche is the, 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 the project, is a project to build a new articulation between, uh, let's say, classical political forces from the working class movement and new uh, political forces coming from the, the ecological movement and social movements unionist, uh, uh, social movements, etc., to have a common tool who can articulate the action of everyone uh, in its own autonomy, but fighting together for common uh, struggles, uh, including the election, but also the social movements. That's what we are trying to do now. And we are very happy because uh, for the first, it's the first time since, uh, for, for the last three decades in France, that a political forces, uh, clearly at the left of the, of the Parti Socialiste, at the Social Democrats, has made more than 10% of the vote. And today in France, I'll be short, nothing can be done at the, at the political level without us. It means today that Hollande uh, is, is, uh, is in a dilemma because don't, don't have any kind of illusion on uh, Hollande. It's not, uh, we should not uh, fall in the trap of a kind of French Obama style, huh? uh, absolutely not, because Hollande is just a member of the, of the big conservative party by principle. I mean, he's just in the consensus of the neoliberalism, of the financial market stuff, etc. But obviously, it's a clear victory because we have defeated Sarkozy, especially because the Front de Gauche uh, has uh, helped Hollande to win. Uh, the majority at the end. But uh, today, Hollande must choose. First possibility, he will play the game of uh, the, the markets, of the Berlin consensus uh, with uh, Merkel, of the uh, fiscal pact, etc., etc. And then he will fall in, uh, in, the, in French, we say, in the, in, the, in the trash of history. I, I mean, it will, it, will, it will be like Zapatero or something like that at the end. Or whether he decides to resist a bit more to uh, these financial markets. And in this uh, perspective, it just have, has one allies, the Front de Gauche. 
and the, the, the popular movement build around these uh, uh, new political forces in order to find progressist answers to the, to, the, to, the, to the crisis. In one word, we say the problem are not the migrants, the problem are, are the banks. That's basically uh, the line, uh, the orientation that we, we want to impulse in the French debate. So, last word. Hollande will have to choose between uh, those two possibilities, and we will see what happens with uh, the discussion on the European uh, Fiscal Pact discussion, because if a new space uh, is, is coming to be open uh, in Europe, we will push our ideas and we will push for, to, uh, for, uh, for, for Hollande to be more radical than what he can imagine himself at the moment. Thank you, uh, Christoph. Uh, very interesting, very interesting developments. But there will be time in the, in the second round. So, um, but we now want to include uh, the people uh, um, in the audience. So uh, I think everybody knows the procedure. Um, okay. So first, you and Samir and oh, oh, okay, three, four, uh, five. Okay. Um, should we take five in a row, or do you want? Uh, how do you how do you want to take it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we have uh, five in a, in a row. I think um, he was. Uh, who's who's first? Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth Gauthier from France and from Transform. Uh, I think that uh, what you said, the reject of the system. For me, the reject of the system is not obligatory left because we have people that reject the system and they uh, go to the extreme right. So starting from the reject of the system, we have to fight for what it becomes as political expression. Uh, and uh, it's one of the interesting things we had in France in this campaign from which uh, was speaking uh, Christophe, that we faced uh, directly on this terrain, uh, the Front National. Uh, to, 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 to show that what they, they tell to be against the system is in reality uh, maintaining the system. So it's too long to explain now, but, uh, but I, I'm, um, we have to fight on, because the feeling against the system is very large in our societies now, but what it becomes. The second thing is that when you say uh, a revolutionary theory of transformation, I think this is a very interesting discussion, what it can be. Um, I think that um, uh, a real revolution, revolutionary theory, sorry, <laughs> it's when it starts from the concrete contradictions in our societies. And it's not in the sense system against system, it's uh, how to, to, to build starting from the contradictions and from the, the growing contradictions in our system, uh, a perspective of, trans, of, of radical and emancipatory transformation. And, uh, and this means a very complex uh, strategy because uh, the, the, we are starting from very complex contradictions. And, and so I think that this is our, our uh, fight and this is the, the difficulty also because we have, have new forms from, from, from resistance, but uh, in order to transform them in a left strategy, uh, it's not easy what we see with the Occupy movement and all these things. Thank you. Uh, please uh, try to be uh, as short as possible. I know it's difficult, but there are many people, um, well, many people who want to say something. I think Samir Amin was second. Thank you. No, I'll be very, very short because it's not a comment, it's a question. Uh, the question is uh, part more particularly to Harris uh, Polemis. Uh, what is the next step? We are in a war now, and uh, I assume, if I am wrong, I would like to hear the arguments, uh, that uh, the European uh, establishment as it is uh, will not accept uh, uh, making concessions to Greece that is, we'll, have, we'll say austerity or nothing, no alternative to austerity, to more austerity. Now, in those uh, conditions, uh, in, a, in a war, you, you cannot just have a strategy. You have to have a tactics also. What is the next step today in Greece to that challenge of Europe saying no, just austerity? Okay, thank you. Uh, we go over here, and then 
then it's uh, uh, Walter Bayer and then Catherine Samari. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I skipped you. I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah. No, so it's, um, no, it's first uh, here, and then it's, it's you, I think, and then uh, Walter Bayer, and then Catherine Samari. And, and 20 more people. Uh, speaking of concreteness, I, I would like to thank you because I, I, I heard it being repeated, you know, looking at the concrete situation, at the concrete struggle. Uh, I would uh, beg to differ with uh, Comrade Golemins in, uh, in not uh, looking specifically at Greece since perhaps it's the weakest link at the present. Uh, taking, f following uh, Dr. Amin, uh, that in a generalized war you need to have uh, beyond a strategy, strategy tactics uh, and uh, since uh, the European Union will not accept of the fiscal memos, uh, how do you respond to just yesterday's uh, call by the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Greece that regardless of the elections, upcoming election outcome, be the three, two percent, uh, the Communist Party will put forward a proposal calling for the cancellation of all debts, all memos of Greece. Now, given that it was the position of the radical European uh, left, uh, at least initially, that these debts be cancelled, how do you uh, assume your uh, European position in Greece will be to this uh, to, to this proposal uh, of the Communist Party. Thank you. No. Martine. I have just two points. One is a question about uh, uh, relationship between uh, social movements and European left. Because uh, as she, I don't remember, sorry, your name, but as she said, social movements is something that is uh, very broad and the European left is a political party uh, uh, that is uh, rather small. But the pro problem is not the quantity. In my opinion and because of our experience uh, in Italy about the relationship between uh, movements and the party, leftist party like Rifondazione, the result was a disaster. So I believe very strongly in the independence of the social movements uh, including trade unions, of course, but social movements, uh, it's very, must be very strong, and the uh, political parties and the left parties. Uh, this does not mean that we have not to discuss and to dialogue and to confront our, our opinions, but the dependence uh, and the clear distinction is something very important. Otherwise, I think we damage the movements and we damage also the, the party. The second point, and of course, I would like to have your opinions on that. And the second point is about uh, something that was mentioned by Christophe, uh, the so-called uh, anti-politica. I don't know in English what is the, the, the word, anti-politics, I don't know. Huh? A-politica, okay. So, uh, I'm not sure that it's a-politica, it's anti, it's different. It's uh, anti, yes. Okay, so you understand what I mean is what it was. Uh, I think we have to be very careful about this because what is happening, for instance, in Italy with the Five Stars uh, movement is, uh, and, but not only, is a very strong criticism and about many things I agree and many of us agree with the strong criticism to the parties, not to the politics in general, no. Because I heard many of them speaking, I don't uh, speak about the, 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 their leader, Grillo, who is a rather demagogue, a rather populist, but about the people who have been elected. They just say, we want to be uh, near people, we want to be near what they need, we want to be near and give some answer to their request, the local elections, administrators, uh, 
but it's not, they say we want a good politics. They don't say we don't want politics. So we have to be very careful. That is something completely different from the extreme right, the racist, the xenophobic, etc. So, um, I mean, so many things are changing. So I think we have uh, to, to follow the changing the society and the relation between uh, society and uh, parties. And the, the criticism uh, against parties about uh, uh, what they do or what they don't do, mostly, and left, <laughs> I'm talking about the left parties, uh, is uh, quite right. And uh, plus the criticism about the privilege in a situation where people are really, in some cases, starving and really suffering for crisis huh, to uh, have uh, maybe 700 euros uh, or by month, and to see a large, very large group of people who take 12,000 uh, euros per month, this is an unbearable uh, social injustice. And I agree with this. And social justice, I think, is the main, the main point for left uh, parties and also, for, of course, for social movements. Thank you. Uh, I think... Um uh, Walter Bayer now. So, w without being polemical, but I don't like the uh, rhetoric of war when it comes to political struggles. This is a political struggle and this is not a war. And this is important to distinguish because we experience wars. And not only because of this, I have the feeling that one of the risks we are taking, uh, for example, in Greece consists in the fact that the ruling classes may turn the political confrontation into a violent confrontation. And one target we should aim at is to help avoiding a violent confrontation in Greece and elsewhere. We have to, to be aware of the fact that this is not the option for which the left should opt. Secondly, and this uh, maybe refers to that what you were saying, uh, we had our defeats in the 70s. You had yours and I had mine as at that time uh, I believed that um, the Soviet Union and the so-called real, real socialist states were the superior form of living together. What I took as a conclusion out of this experience was that without having a political majority in society, no social, confront no social transformation is possible. And this, for the moment, requires, in my regard, uh, that we develop the capacity to make a political construction uh, referring to the national frame and to the European frame. I fully share uh, what Alessandra says. This requires to, to, to uh, understand the, or to respect the autonomy of the social movements, of the trade unions, and to understand the specific character of uh, political um, organizations, but at the same time, uh, the question is real, how can we construct out of the resistances and how can we develop a political construction which turns, the, which shifts the relation of power in the European frame from the neoconservative, from the right to the left. And I would say that this is the uh, this is the question, the challenge in front of all of us, and I would say this concerns the European Left Party and this concerns the social movements, and we should find ways in which we can discuss these questions without questioning the reciprocal independence and autonomy of the two spaces. Thank you. We'll take two more questions and then, then the panelists will reply. Uh, Catherine Samari. Well, uh, um, first of all, I, I would like to, to strongly support the first intervention of our Greek comrade. And um, I, I do believe we have confronted to a, a very a new international situation where the, the, the bourgeoisie and the capital is organized at a different level and that the left has also to be organized at different level and not to oppose uh, the resistance uh, from uh, at the local, national, European, and even, uh, I would say, at the global level, because we are also confronted to global uh, forms of uh, uh, institutions and uh, uh, 
and uh, means of uh, aggression by the, the bourgeoisie uh, uh, at the, from the International Monetary Fund, from NATO, and so on. So, so we have to, to invent uh, resistance and strategies uh, from the local to the global level with articulation, first point. Second point, uh, I think that the issue raised about the articulation between uh, social movements, parties, and so on is uh, also to be dealt with in a very uh, innovative way and new, uh, com with a combination of uh, uh, emphasis put on uh, extra parliamentary, extra uh, gov governmental uh, forms of uh, self organization. Uh, within factories, uh, surroundings, and so on, and social movements, but politics doesn't belong to parties. And we have also to invent uh, forms of uh, social political front. I, I would like that what uh, Christophe said about the, 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 the left front I, I was the reality, but for the moment, uh, we have to build in France uh, something which could be completely independent both from the, from the state, I would say, and uh, combine the forces with respect of autonomy of social movement, reunions, but try to combine forces of uh, all those who resist. The last point on Europe. Uh, I do believe that uh, one of the big difficulties for the left was precisely uh, that we had to, to fight on two fronts, on two fronts, and accepting the existing uh, treaties and uh, institutions uh, makes, uh, helps uh, the development of the, the rightist uh, xenophobia uh, currents, but opposing them on the uh, xenophobia and nationalist way is also uh, completely the impasse. And we, the, the big difficulty up to a recent period, that is up to the recent uh, uh, vote in Greeks and, and Syriza position was that as, as I participate in Slovenia and some comrades here know that I tried to defend the option of a third, vo a third way between uh, rejection, uh, which we have to do of course, of the existing European uh, 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 institutions, treaties and so on, and policies of course, and, uh, uh, and nationalist position. And Syriza offers us such uh, a possibility to build uh, something which says, the, and, and uh, uh, just to comment before uh, concretizing it, uh, capital exists, of course, the capitalism exists as a whole. But it has its own contradiction. The bourgeoisie is divided, and, uh, and the European Union is, is fragile. The European Union is both strong and fragile. It has no legitimacy. The, the pact has no legitimacy. The European Union is not NAFTA. It's not a free zone. It's a political project. And we have to delegitimize uh, the political project on the base of democracy, on human rights, human rights on social needs. And we, we can't combine something which says each nation has the right to say uh, we want to have social services, we want to have full employment, we want to protect environment, we want to have sovereign so choices on that point of view. But this sovereign choice is a European and international choice for all people. And today, the, the, the bourgeoisie is homogenizing the situation and confronting us to a global attack, not only on Greek, uh, people. For that reason, we can con concretely support Syriza position and say we, uh, we don't want to be in a union and stay in the union as it is, but we, we, have the leg we want to win the legitimacy against the dominant pact, and we want all the people to vote in the very same way the Greek one have voted and support the Greek Syriza line to change the European Union. Thank you, uh, Catherine. And we have here one more question, and then we'll give um, the panelists the chance to, to reply, and if there is time, then we'll, we'll have another round of, of questions, maybe. All right, thank you. Um, I would like to draw attention to something which I feel has been so far conspicuously absent from the discussion. 
Um, in yesterday's afternoon discussion, Gaspar Miklos Tamas uh, said that uh, we need to bear in mind where we are. Um, not in this particular case as a theoretical or historical standpoint, but rather as a, as a purely geographical one. And in that case, rather within this context, I would like to invite a more um, critical reflection on uh, the implications of these, these discussions for the left in this part of the world. When I say this part of the world, I mean primarily former communist countries, including all countries of uh, former Yugoslavia that are on the way of becoming or want to be European Union members. Um, and I'm saying this because I believe that in these countries, uh, the discursive as well as symbolic uh, space for struggle is much smaller given that, first of all, these countries do not have the option of refusing European Union dictates because they do not have a political space for doing this. Uh, European Union member states, at least to some extent that I'm aware that this does not necessarily uh, apply to Greece to the fullest, but they still have, a, they are in the position to say no. Um, future or wannabe European Union members risk, or rather whenever um, they would want to dare uh, to say no to the European Union dictates, they risk uh, being labeled as anti-European. And you would notice how quickly um, European Union and Europe become conflated in this particular uh, particular case. Um, another reason why this discursive space is very, very small is because uh, the left has been, well, to some extent at least, uh, including because of the, well, the, the entire communist history slash legacy, has been somewhat discredited. And apart from a very small um, portion of liberal or socialist intelligentsia in these countries, uh, communism is widely associated with the breakup of former Yugoslavia, not nationalism, which is quite, quite interesting per se. So what happens is that instead, instead of a strong left, at least that is my, my impression, in most of former Yugoslavia, that is luckily changing somewhat now, but uh, up until now we've had this kind of watered down version of social democracy, which is definitely more centered than it is left. Um, and any opposition to these, uh, to either the, well, any opposition to the European Union dominated discourse uh, risks being labeled as neo-nationalist or far right. So I think that uh, the, the entire context of struggle in these cases is very much different and I think that we should definitely take this into account given where we are. Okay, thank you. So um, now, um, who wants to reply first? Uh, Karl-Heinz, okay. Yes. You. Yes. Yes. Uh, so it's to say uh, to, uh, something much. I will say to you, I don't agree with you because you speak about uh, it's the same uh, when we sp uh, spoke about to change the system, but we don't. Sp uh, it's the same when we uh, the, the right wing. Uh, so will always uh, change the system, but it doesn't. It doesn't true. We we speak we speak about we speak about to change the capitalist system in a social determined uh, system, and uh, the, the right wing will not fight against the capitalism. They will install a brutally uh, high hierarchy 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 and uh, anti-feministic capitalistic system. And that it's, uh, and you can't say uh, that it's, uh, uh, or I, or I, I understand you. And for you, um, you, it, it's okay, it's right. You can say we, 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 uh, we, we must, uh, wage is a word, but the Worte wiegen, also we can't, we can't, we can only, uh, uh, say it's it's a war, but what has happened in the last uh, uh, 15 years? Sami Amin, when when he said it's it's a war, there's a war in Afghanistan, a war in in uh, in, in in Iraq. It, it's uh, Libya was bombarded. It, it's a war. It, it's not uh, it's not a normal uh, uh, capitalistic system. It's a system in the war. When we have a, a, a look all over uh, the world, and now I will go back to to the to the German, and uh, I will ask uh, uh, Stiepe. Um, I, I, I have uh, uh, here 
ich, ich habe jetzt hier auch, die, äh, auch schon gestern die Hoffnung äh, gehört, dass man äh, doch in den äh, politischen äh, Strategien jetzt zum Beispiel sehr auf, auf einen systemimmanenten äh, Machtkampf setzt. Und man, man, man hat viele Hoffnungen, zum Beispiel, das höre ich auch bei den französischen Genossen her, auf äh, Hollandais. Nicht? Und, äh, im Gegenteil, ach so, okay, das ist, das ist gut, dann, dann habe ich das nicht ganz äh, verstanden, weil, nein, weil es gibt, gibt, es, gibt es die Möglichkeit, ihn unter Druck zu setzen, nicht? Also, also so. Und da kann ich ja nur, ich muss hier unsere deutsche Erfahrung äh, an... Ich übersetzen sonst, sonst. Okay. Okay, um, so, um, I've heard um, yesterday and today uh, that... Um, Many comrades here consider that a struggle has to be uh, a form of, of uh, a struggle imminent to the system. And uh, for example, also as uh, Christoph has suggested that uh, there may be uh, um, options for the left to, to uh, push even Hollande to the, uh, to the left uh, by uh, applying pressure uh, from the left. Letztlich immer nur äh, die Wahl, äh, dass wir äh, zwischen äh, Leuten, in Deutschland hatten wir die Wahl zwischen einem rheinischen Kapitalismus, wie ihn Helmut Kohl gemacht hat, oder zwischen den Technokraten, wie es die rot-grüne Regierung da sind, ja, äh, gewesen sind. Und sie haben die schlimmsten äh, sozialstaatlichen äh, Rücknahmen durchgesetzt, äh, die man sich äh, so vorstellen kann. So, um But uh, speaking from a German perspective and experience, uh, we, uh, the only options we ever had were uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, well, uh, Rhine, uh, uh, Rhine capitalism, how do, how do, in, well, in English, well, you know, the river Rhine, we all know, I guess. So the Rhine model uh, of Helmut Kohl, the con conservative version, and then we had the, uh, the, um, The, yeah, the social democratic and green uh, technocratic government of, of, of Schröder, uh, who, who were uh, actually, um, their assault on the welfare state was even uh, uh, more, more ferocious than, than uh, what, ha what has come, uh, what came before that. Ich stimme dem zu, was die Frau eben oben gesagt hat, dass es verschiedene Ebenen gibt und verschiedene Wege zu kämpfen. Das ist wichtig. Ich will auch den parlamentarischen Weg will ich über, überhaupt nicht in Frage stellen jetzt an dieser Stelle. Wer das macht, kann darin auch eine, 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 eine gute Arbeit machen. Aber ich bin dagegen, dass man darauf die Hoffnung äh, setzt. And uh, I agree with what has been said earlier, that there are uh, different uh, uh, levels of struggle, and I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, trying to, uh, to say uh, that the uh, parliamentary struggle is irrelevant. Uh, this is also, of course, um, uh, um, a ground one, uh, one uh, can struggle on, and some people do it and do it, uh, do it well, but uh, what, uh, what I wish to say is that I think it, it is wrong to put all one's hopes into, into, uh, into um, these imminent parliamentary uh, forms of struggle. Uh, only, only short, because I'm always short. Uh, the majority um, in uh, politics, uh, to, to get the majority in policy, uh, that was your um, statement. Um, It's, the majority is also very, um, it, it's, a, uh, it's uh, subtle, because, um, for example, um, in the second uh, time of the Second uh, World War, uh, the majority in France, I, I, I wrote, uh, I read uh, uh, yeah, some days ago, was, um, was for Vichy. And um, if there was not a person who said, uh, like, de Gaulle, uh, no, uh, that is not France, this majority, there is another majority which is the true majority of France and that we fight for. And that was a minority. And so I, I would not uh, have so much hopes in the majority. The majority in Chile also was, uh, there was a majority and they were um, done um, to, to the ground uh, by a dictatorship and by the military um, put. Uh, therefore, I think um, it's necessary to, to uh, fight for uh, and, and to, to try to convince people uh, for, for um, uh, I have to, to come back, uh, for, for the overcome of the capitalistic system, not for um, such um, what, what the right says or what the Nazis uh, said, uh, that they uh, 
also were against the system, against the uh, against the governmental system, but not against uh, the um, the economic and social um, basis. They 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 uh, were not touched by them, and the industry was not touched, and uh, the the uh, property um, um, was not touched. So it's. Um, I only wanted to respond to you, Alessandro, but now I'm, of course, want to take part in this debate. Um, Karl-Heinz and Gabriela, when you said war, yes, it is war. No, I would say, and yes, at the same time. Yes, uh, you said it's war because it's not normal capitalism. We have war in Afghanistan, in, in other countries. But that is normal capitalism. I, I only remember capitalism and there were wars going on. Not might be the world war, but there were always wars as long as capitalism existed. So for me, that does not uh, make any difference. Why I would not consider and not really use the word war to describe the situation in Europe now is because I'd rather like to say, to, to call it an enhanced class struggle. Um, it is an enhanced class struggle because it takes more and more people, are, if they want it or not, they are part of it. Because we are deprived more and more about rights, we thought it's they are secure. We were calling it a European social model, we were calling it a European way of democracy and felt superior to other parts of the world. And now we realize it's not the case. It's if we do not fight for it, if we not struggle constantly for these rights, then we are lost. Okay, this is how I uh, would rather approach uh, the thing. And now I come back again to the question is uh, how is it the end of capitalism? We, and Elizabeth, I, I thought I understood Karl Heinz rightly when he was talking about overcoming the system, meaning, of course, in the right direction. But I want to insist that it will not be overcome without that enhanced class struggle with the constant uh, development of very, as you said, Elizabeth, very, very concrete proposals, keeping in mind the the revolutionary perspective, so to say, but keeping also in mind that we are not discussing between us. We are, if we are not able to understand what the people want, if we do not understand that and realize what's, what is our duty to respond to their um, needs, to offer proposals to offer to, to go together in the right direction, of course. And of course we can tell them that in the long run there would be no other alternative but to change that system completely and uh, we have to tell them, but not like the Enlightenment did, you know, not, not like to, to think uh, if we tell them very often and very thoroughly, they will understand in the end. No, they will understand when we offer them to fight together for a concrete betterment of their conditions. This is what we are here for. I'm, of course, talking as a politician. Now I'm finished with that and then, Alessandra, um, yes, you are right, social movements and parties. Of course, I agree with you. You. But what I was wanting to say was, we can insist on our distinctions or we can concentrate on our tasks and taking the distinctions for granted. Not trying to say, oh my God, might be this or uh, 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 the other social movement or party want to include me and want to eat me, so to say. I think if we would approach with saying, yes, the distinctions are taken for granted, but we have common tasks we have to face. We need to do that. And Christophe, you, we are coming from different stratas of our common family, so to say. But if we would not have this approach in the European Left Party, if we would try all the time just to take the other approach in and not trying to find feasible compromises, not weak compromises, compromises that enables us to go further in a stronger capacity with a more open mind, then we would be lost. We could close our books and say that was it. Thank you. Yes. 
Well, th there are a lot of things uh, on the table. So um, just on, on the same point uh, with uh, social movements and uh, political parties. Obviously, uh, I think that I repeat uh, what, what has been said, the fact that uh, we are all in favor of a clear autonomy and respect uh, for, for this uh, principle uh, between social movements and uh, political parties. And uh, mo moreover, this question is different in each country, coming from different uh, polit uh, political and historical traditions. But that's obviously the, the, the key point, to, 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 be, uh, to respect the autonomy and the independence of each actors. But the simple question is just to, to, to know if we, we want and we, we find a way to do it, to build a common agenda of mobilizations, of, uh, of uh, pressure uh, on uh, the, the European agenda, at least uh, at the European level, because that's where, where we are. And I think, actually, it's just to, 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 to continue what's, what we are doing, the fact that today we are in this configuration, the fact that we have spaces like that to discuss between... Uh, uh, social movements, parties, etc., is absolutely necessary. So that's uh, what we, we, we want to do. And I'd like just to, to, to uh, underline the fact that, for example, uh, uh, two months ago, the European left uh, proposed the organization of a European meeting in Brussels uh, to build or to uh, develop that uh, dialogue with uh, social movements to see uh, what kind of uh, roadmap we can build together uh, because we are all confronted to the same... Uh, uh, oppression. I mean, uh, neoliberal policies, uh, the ol oligarchy uh, in Europe, etc., etc. So uh, I think that's uh, we, we have to we have to build this road by practical things, not by uh, uh, theoretical answers. Uh, uh, we, we can uh, make uh, uh, several steps, I'm sure, in, in this direction. So that's uh, that's what we have to do. Um, just. Uh, on the on the general situation, I, I think that what is very interesting in Syriza and uh, in France, for example, is the fact that we have a good news. It's not all uh, it's not all the day like that. I mean, just we, we we should appreciate the fact that it shows that in Europe, in several places, uh, people uh, mass sectors of uh, of the population wants uh, to have positive perspectives to uh, the crisis. Uh, that's what Syriza shows uh, in Greece, and uh, that's a good surprise. I mean, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure that uh, two months ago or one month ago we, 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 we would have said uh, or predict that kind of situation. No. So it, it showed that uh, things can change, and it showed that uh, history is not done before. So we have reasons to, to, to build what uh, we are building and to fight, etc. So... Uh, the Greek situation showed that, in some respect, the French one with the Front de Gauche too, even if, Catherine, uh, you, you, you're right in the fact that uh, everything is beginning and uh, that's, a, that's a challenge uh, to, to, to be built. But it's not easy because, uh, actually, that's what we want to do, to build that kind of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 balance between uh, different actors, different traditions, different moments, uh, with the, but with the idea that we, can't we don't have to divide uh, the different uh, spaces of uh, struggles. Uh, it, when it's political, it's political. When it's, in it's an election, it's an election. When it's a social movement, it's a social movement. But what kind of common uh, new tool we can have uh, to, uh, to uh, be uh, uh, effective in those different moments in, uh, in the agenda? That's, I think, what uh, Le Front de Gauche uh, wants to do uh, uh, in France and in the future, and I'm sure that this uh, idea uh, is part of its success at the moment, so we, 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 we have to do that. And last word, uh, I will uh, and be in, uh, in another perspective. If you look what has, uh, where are the successes, if you look at Latin America, for example, it's very interesting because uh, we have seen what can become societies uh, destroyed by the neoliberal agenda, the AMF, etc., during two decades. And suddenly, in all the countries at the end of the 90s, the, the political system collapsed very uh, quickly without any kind of uh, uh, analysis. Nobody was able to see, like, uh, in some words, what happened in Tunisia uh, for the, uh, the Arab Spring, etc. Nobody knew that in Venezuela, for example, Chavez would be elected in 98 like this, and suddenly after in Argentina, what happened with Kirchner, et cetera. Just to say that 
we know that uh, in, in, in those uh, experiences, uh, the key question of the articulation, uh, not the fusion, but the articulation of the social movements, of the political forces, of the citizens, has been the key success of, uh, of, uh, of uh, what's uh, uh, occurred in those countries in order to find uh, an alternative to uh, the uh, classical political system and the uh, uh, two uh, uh, party uh, system between uh, conservatives and uh, social democrats in Latin America. And we do believe that, uh, not in this uh, configuration because uh, Europe is not Latin America, but we can see that historically uh, those things occurred. And uh, that's why uh, we will find the, the, the form and we will find the configuration needed in Europe uh, but it's clearly the, 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 the perspective that we have to assume to be this articulation if we want in a certain moment to be able to offer an alternative to uh, the, let's say, a great conservative party built by the conservatives, the far right, and uh, the social democrats in some respects. And that's why uh, uh, we are experimenting that kind of, uh, of process in France, in Greece, and in other countries. But uh, the, 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 the challenge for us is that we, are, that we are in Europe in competition with other reactionary forces who are also uh, uh, challenging the, the conservative uh, uh, um, consensus with reactionaries, uh, uh, reactionary answers. That's the, 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 the situation we have to deal with, uh, which is specific to, to, uh, to the European situation. Thank you. Um, Christoph, and now uh, Harris. Well, uh, contrary to, to Walter, I, I love polemics, and you know that. But uh, I'm very selective uh, in, uh, when I have a fight or a war. For example, um, I don't think that we should stay too much on, on the word uh, war. I, as I was saying to my friend from the interventionist uh, uh, left yesterday, uh, the, my presence uh, uh, in the anti-globalization movement and in, in the European Social Forum, in the World Social Forum, uh, had influenced the way I, I uh, could see and I can see uh, people from which uh, I had uh, uh, spaces of differences in the 60s, in the 70s, and maybe today. So, and I have come to accept uh, that uh, they can use different jargons. Uh, so, there is no reason why we should uh, fight. It is a difficult situation. It's, some people say it's fight, some others say it's war. Certainly words have their meaning, but it's a part of gaining in a peaceful way, I think, the hegemony within uh, uh, our common struggles. That's, that's as a first observation. Uh, secondly, I would say that uh, I, I agree absolutely uh, uh, with what Catherine uh, Samari said. Uh, I agree so, so much that I, I don't know if this is good for, for, for her or for me. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I couldn't agree less. Uh, I mean, the, on the importance of, of the struggle at the national level, at, on the importance of the struggle of, on connecting with the international level, of uh, uh, being together with uh, that, that, the that the left is not only the political left, but it's also the social movements uh, as, as a general uh, definition of the radical left, and this and this and the other ones. But now, well, I would like to be polemic to some other uh, remarks that were made. Um, firstly, I would, and uh, taking the opportunity from what uh, my friend here, uh, Nicholas, said regarding the proposal uh, of the General Secretary of the Communist Party. The Communist Party doesn't uh, make proposals to the other parts of the left. <laughs> Never. They accuse all forces of the left, first thing. But anyway, there was a, 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 a funny joke which was made some months ago uh, against uh, uh, Syriza and its leader uh, in a press conference given by the General Secretary of the Communist Party. 
At that time, the, the, Ale, uh, Aleka Papariga said, come on, like, with, a, with a small laugh, come on, how can it be that Syriza or Tsipras frighten Merkel? Are you, are, you, are you serious about that? You know something? Uh, at this moment, Syriza and Tsipras has turned the world upside down. It has frightened not only Merkel, it has frightened Barroso, it has frightened the markets, it has frightened uh, everybody in Europe, and all, everybody now is trying to see how they, they, can, uh, hand, how they can handle with the situation in Greece. So the joke was not so successful. But in any way, I, I accept that uh, it is part of uh, a common idea that the Communist Party of Greece has uh, with all the other parties in Greece, the Conservatives and the Social Democrats, those who put pressure to us to be in the government, those who accuse us of being anti-European, while the Communist Party at the other side say that we are pro-European. What is this common thing that uh, this is the European U Union? You either take it as it is or leave it. We don't believe in this. We don't believe that, I mean, our, our position is that our project is part of a general project of the European radical left. What we do in our country has, or we, we want to have, ecumenical, and coming back to the old communist past of mine, ecumenical dimensions. Maybe this is a quixotic uh, uh, perspective, but a, a utopian one, but this is what we believe. And this is what gives us the right to say that uh, our struggle, which is not sure that uh, it will be successful at the end, everybody is against us, the Communist Party included. So uh, we don't know if it is successful. Our struggle is a struggle of the whole left in Europe. Uh, yes, we are not for, uh, to, uh, I don't want to escape a question. We are not for a unilateral uh, abolition of the debt. No. We don't, and I, I will tell you why. I will take an example. Um, and I will take, allow me to take a personal example. When I retired, I got uh, a lump sum compensation. This is the way that is being done in Greece. And I'm not the only case. And I put this money to uh, Greek bonds. To Greek bonds. Now, all, all this money are in there. And the same will happen with a general cancellation of the debts, of the debt, if we do that for pensioners throughout Europe. We don't like this. We don't like this. We want a selective cancellation, a selective one. And we want to discuss with the, the, the European Union, but on one condition, that no decision can be taken, no debt can be repaid, if that means that the people in Greece will be left without job, their wages will be uh, lower, and blah, 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 blah. What that means? That means that we take a risk. We take, yes, we take a risk of being thrown out of the European Union. And we take this risk. We don't want it because we think that then the situation will be difficult, not only for Greece, but also for the rest of Europe. But anyway, we take this risk. And certainly, since we will not obey if we come to power, which is not something so um, obvious as some people believe, yes, we will resist to this, expecting that we can shake Europe and change the policies, even, even a little bit, even a little bit. But, to, this is an answer also to my respected friend, uh, Samir Amin. What's next? This is what's next. 
If we, are, if we are kicked out, we are kicked out. And then we will have to think again, to, to, to start our lives in our country in a more difficult situation, trying again not to be disconnected by the other parts of the left, and being very worried for the fact that in this situation, the extreme right, the nationalist left, not only in Greece, but throughout Europe, will be in a great joy. Because the dissolution of the European Union has not only one side, it has another side. And uh, we, as uh, radical leftists in Europe and the revolutionaries in whatever way, we, have, uh, the, the, we are obliged to try and prevent the class struggle which takes place at a national level to a transnational conflict between peoples. This is my position. I'm sorry if I disappoint some people, but, uh, and uh, I must tell you that things are not so easy because to gain votes, and uh, my comrade, uh, uh, Christophe just said that, less than a minute. Uh, uh, Christophe said that uh, it was not so much expected. Uh, and this is uh, an example of, of how quickly uh, developments can take place, can take place during crisis, but at the same time, how unstable a situation is. We have not come to a certain point of stability. I mean, people who had voted for us are nationalists. There are also people who uh, believe that everything can uh, return to the previous case, are not anti-capitalists. <laughs> I mean, our task is to try and gain and retain some part of these people. We cannot do that by simply by denouncing capitalism. We have to give uh, practical solutions to daily program problems. If we don't do that, especially if we are thrown out, and uh, even if we are not thrown out, in the next ele elections, maybe this uh, percentage will be very low, and uh, then the Communist Party will be happy again, because after 1968 and the split uh, in the Communist movement, it is the first time that the Communist Party is now below us. It's the first time in history. And I think that this is an excellent development for the left in Europe. Thank you. Uh, Harris? <laughs> Only uh, one more thing. Thomas Seibert has uh, something. You'd... Okay. Okay, then after the next uh, panel. But uh, we are out of time, unfortunately.